Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today on Customer States, what we have a low mileage 2020 Audi Q5. We're going to be going through a used car inspection and the maintenance that goes along with it. Let's get into this. Very good. I guess we're going for the long pour here, guys. Damn, this thing is thirsty. It's not leaking out the bottom, is it? No, all right, good. Freaking 10 years later. All right, good. Very good. 32 millimeter socket. Going the right direction. Now, don't take the oil filter all the way out because there's still oil in here. What you want to do is you just want to crack it free until you just see the O-ring and then let the oil drain down. Now that we have our sucker under full vacuum and we got our plug out, we're going to start sucking the oil out. Very good. See, that way you don't get oil everywhere. Very good. Now that we have the oil draining, we're going to go around all four doors and the tailgate and lubricate the latches and the door hinges. This is the driver's rear door. Passenger rear. Passenger front. Very good. When we go through the interior, we go through all the safety features. We make sure all the seatbelt inertias work. We make sure all the seatbelts buckle. And we already have done that to the front and to the rear. We are also going through all the buttons, make sure they work. We make sure the wireless charger works. We make sure all the AUX ports and the USB ports work. We got one there. We got one over there. Make sure the navigation works. No warning lights. We make sure all the buttons on the steering wheel and the paddle shifters work. So far, we didn't find any issues with the interior. Sunroof is good. All the overhead buttons work. Very good. We don't really have a garage door to program that, but uh, there are no faults stored in the vehicle for it. So we could safe to safely assume that it is operational. So other than that, uh, we also look for any damage in the interior, any perforations in the leather, uh, any damage to the wood grain. It's dirty in here, but uh, nothing's damaged. So, yeah, we're going to move on out of the interior into the exterior. So now with any inspection, you walk around the vehicle, you want to check the body seams, you want to check the paint for any scratches. Looks like we have, oh, that was a little speck of something. That's not that bad. We check the body seams on the door, the roof line. We check the roof for any dents. We check the bumpers for any dings or anything like that because these corner lights are a common area to ding up and to crack. And when they crack, they fail. So, yeah, we walk around the vehicle, top to bottom, make sure all the lenses are good, make sure all the gaps are good, and we keep it moving. One of the most important things on every oil change Make sure you replace the O-ring, your Goombas, always.
Now this is a plastic oil filter housing going into a metal housing. You don't want to over tighten this. You just want to give it a nice snug. If you're really worried, there is a torque spec, but you'll see when it stops, just give it a little and that's it. Well, all right, guys, we just completed the oil change service, or I should say the 30,000 mile service. All fluids are topped off to their proper levels where needed. Coolant, washer fluid, brake fluid is right where it needs to be, but we are doing a brake fluid exchange today based off of the age of the vehicle, not the mileage. Usually the brake fluid exchange is every 20,000 miles, but since it hasn't been done, we're performing it today. Very good. If you guys don't know what comes next, let's take it up top. So now that we have taken it up top, we're going to look around. We're not going to find any flavor here, ladies and gentlemen, because it's a 2020 with just over 9,000 miles. So with that being said, we're just looking for damage, making sure there's no damage. This is a well-known area on Audis for customers to hit. Uh, we don't see anything. Exhaust is looking good. Your suspension's looking good. We got some minor flavor, but that's it's gonna happen. No matter what car you have. Alright, that looks good. Everything looks good under here. I don't see any damage or any body shop work. That's always a good thing. Very good, very good, guys. All right, let's get these wheels off and uh, take some measurements. And uh, we're going to measure the tires, measure the brake pads, measure the brake rotors, and uh, we're going to finish assessing the vehicle. Very good. We have our tire pressure. We're going to set 3336, but since it's winter time, we're going to do 3636. All right, guys, so this is going to be a lot of information here that I have to write down and inspections I have to do. Here we have tire measurements. We're going to have three different numbers here because we measure across the tire. That's for all four tires. We have two millimeter measurements here. One's for the brake pads, one's for the rotor. Here we have the new spec of a rotor. Here we have the wear limit. And here we have what spec of brake it is. Here we have the DOT number of all four tires. So remember how this looks. All this information is going to be filled out. On our road test, we only really needed front wiper blades. They were given a little bit of chitter chatter. So let's get into this. These are the three tools that I'm using to measure the brakes and tires. We got a tread depth gauge, we got a brake head measuring device, and we got a digital micrometer. Very good. Now let's measure these brakes up. 8.30 seconds, 9.30 seconds, 9.30 seconds. Very good. And we do that to all four tires. All right, guys, sorry for the tilted picture here, but here we are at location. We're at the left front tire. Excuse me, we're at the left front rim. And we usually measure about 20 to 30 millimeters from the top edge down to the rotor. So we zero our gauge out. Bring this in. 29.41. Now we take three of those measurements in three different areas of the rotor. And then uh, we take it from there. Very good. All right, guys, so now we're going to measure the brake pads. We have our measuring device here. I'm going to say it's between 8 and 9 millimeter. Yep, it's a little bigger than an 8 millimeter, and it's too small for the 10 millimeter, which we'll measure it right now with the 10 millimeter. See, we can't fit it in there, so these brake pads are roughly 9 millimeter. And you also check the inner pad as well. You have to go to the top side of the caliper here to check the inner pad. Very good. So let's mark our sheet and keep it moving. So here we have the next portion of the service. We have the brake fluid exchange going. And we start at the right rear. Now before I do start the service, I make sure I spray a little bit of PB Blaster on each one of the bleeders. And then I crack them free just to make sure that during service, I'm not going to have any struggles. 
So we know for a fact that all the bleeders will bleed, and now we're gonna continue our service. Very good. Now guys, when you're done with your brake fluid exchange, always clean your area. You wanna make it look like you were never there. Now guys, before I put the rim back on the vehicle, after I brake clean the caliper of any excess brake fluid from the service, I wire brush the hub here, and then I put a little bit of high temp anti-seize on the hub. Now remember, there are no mistakes, only happy little bushes. So just put a little bit, not a lot, you don't cake it on to the point where it's gonna bleed onto the rotor face. You just put just a little bit. That way, God forbid the customer gets a flat and they have to take the rim off. They're not gonna struggle to get the rim off. Very good. Now here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We have all of our information filled out. We got our tire measurements, our brake measurements, and our uh, DOT numbers, pretty much the date of the tire that was manufactured. So we got 8.30 seconds, 9.9, 8, 9.8. So, but that tells me there, and the same for here, 9, 10, 9, that the center has a little bit more tread, that the customer did not check their tire pressures. Because if, it was, if they had good tire pressure, it would be the same across the board. Or if they had it overpressured, the center number would be lower than the outer numbers. Now so here we have our brake measurements. We are well within specifications. The limit is 28 and brand new rotors are 30. We're at 29.41, so we roughly lost a little over half a millimeter there. A little more than half a millimeter there. Goes for the same there, 20, 22 are the limits and the brand new. So yeah, we're, we're, we're going good. We already put brand new wiper blades, we performed the 30,000 mile service, and we also performed the brake fluid exchange. All services are warranty services. Well, all right guys, that's the used car inspection and reconditioning. We performed the 30,000 mile service, we performed the brake fluid exchange, performed the entire inspection of the vehicle, about a 10 mile road test, everything was good. The only thing that we had to put into this vehicle, oh, 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 oh. Let's get that out of there. We don't want to leave that there. So, the only thing that we had to do to this vehicle after trade-in was update it on all of its services because uh, they haven't been done. And brand new wiper blades. They're very good, guys. If you don't know what to do yet, please like, subscribe, hit that bell notification for further content.